Hey everybody, welcome to Generation Xbox. I'm Tyler. I'm Graham. And I'm Steven. And this is your home for all news Xbox related, especially Xbox Series X. We're happy to have you here for episode number 211. And uh, before we jump in, guys, let's talk real quick about another big announcement. We've had a couple over the last couple weeks, but we want to hit this one right away. So we've been teasing something big for a little bit. We're happy to announce that we are launching a website, and this is going to be not just like where to go to get more podcast stuff. It's actually going to be an Xbox-focused site. So we're going to have Xbox news, Xbox opinions, Xbox reviews, all of that stuff, one-stop shop plus podcast episodes not just for this show but for other shows that we end up uh, doing in the future one we'll be talking about relatively soon that uh, we we definitely know we're going to do it's just finding the right time to do it and then other shows that we bring in to the family as well but uh, generationxbox.com is now your home for all xbox news head over there today check out some the news articles that we have including on some lego star wars uh, the Inside Xbox episode that we'll talk about later here in the show. Great opinion piece on Sea of Thieves and where uh, we'd like to see that go in the future, as well as some reviews that'll be getting up over the weekend. So we'd love to have you check that out and just become part of the community, make that part of your rotation for all your gaming news. Again, GenerationXbox.com is your new home for all Xbox news, and we'd love to have you check that out. All right, guys. So few things this week and before we like totally kick off and jump in um I, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention that it's may the 4th this past week and uh you know graham we'll start with you you're the biggest star wars guy <laughs> by far <laughs> yeah you know so did you do anything special for star wars day or do you know anybody that did uh, I don't know anybody personally. I know somebody's birthday was May 4th, oh. and uh, their dad, during this isolation, they were working their way through all nine episodes, and they made it, and she's 11 years old, so, you know, some 11-year-olds don't have quite have that attention span yeah. when it comes to sitting down and watching movies, but she did. She powered through it, whether her dad forced her, I don't know. But uh, I know that's what she did. Uh, as far as me, I started uh, the final one of the Skywalker saga. Yeah, episode nine. Yep. Yeah, episode nine. But I didn't make it all the way through. Um, I definitely want to get back to it. But I'm like, yes, this is Star Wars Day. I'm like, this is a good time because, well, <laughs> funny thing is, Tyler, you told me that it was on sale for ten dollars, and I'm like, yeah. that is a great deal. But I should have thought, I'm like, okay, why is it this? And the reason yeah. it was this was because it was coming for free to Disney, Disney Plus, Plus subscribers, which I am. Ah. So so now I have it for free, and I have the paid version. But now you have it twice, Graham. <laughs> yes, I have You're it twice. Set forever. So I'll get to watch it at least once between the two. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and as far as me, no. Uh, I know a lot of people say, okay. happy May the 4th, and May the 4th be with you. But uh, I, I didn't get into anything more than trying to watch episode nine. Well, Graham, if there's one episode that you would love to have twice, it's definitely that one. Um, <laughs> I detect a little favorite? sarcasm. Let me turn there's on just my, a my sarcasm detector. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Yep, sarcasm. And, I, and I, I love Star Wars. You know that. Yes. Like, I enjoy it. It is not my favorite, though. And it's one of those movies that I know that every time I watch it, I'm going to like it less. Steven, do anything fun and special for Star Wars Day this year. Uh, does writing a paper count as fun and special? <laughs> Wasn't Whee! about Star Wars. <laughs> it was, uh, if, if math is Star Wars, sure. Sure. No, it was kind of history, but I did yeah. it about math because, you know, mathematician here. Um, no, I, I had kind of forgotten that it was coming up. Um, like normally I see stuff on it and I'm like, oh yeah, May the 4th is coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then I don't ever do anything, but it's like, all right, there's probably some Star Wars stuff that's coming. And so, you know, I... The, I, the whole day went by, and I was like, I did not see anything. I didn't even realize it was, you know, Star Wars Day until you wrote an article because, um, you know, we saw a, a brand new box art for Lego Star Wars, yeah. uh, which was really, like, it, it looked really good. And, I mean, as we know, we were super excited to see what we saw at uh, E3 last year. So we're really excited for the game. Um, but, yeah, I did not do anything Super Star Wars related um that day unfortunately again 
had the paper that was due soon and I needed to get that done. So yeah. And I was not in the mood to rewatch episode nine. Um or any of the past Star Wars actually. Yeah. So there's there's that. Yeah, so for me my biggest like the biggest bummer for me that day was that you told me later that the the massive, you know, huge box set of four K at Best Buy was on sale for a hundred bucks off and I would have bought it. Like the the two hundred and fifty dollar price tag is a little much, but when you get to like one fifty, now I can be persuaded, maybe. But I would have bought it. And unfortunately it missed out on it. I checked when last night or the night before when we talked about it and got yeah, back to two fifty yay. So we'll wait on that again and see if it if it goes on sale again in the future. Maybe Black Friday, something like that. But also on my way home from work, I saw somebody dressed as like full shock trooper armor walking down the street with the the pretend uh, blaster rifle, which was pretty cool. All pretty authentic, like, you know, complete cosplay level stuff that you'd see at, you know, any convention. So that was pretty sweet. Even better to see that they didn't react here, like, in Graham's country where, you know, the police show up and have the person, like, laying on the ground. Yeah, you know, I, I watched that video this morning, and I'm like, you know, this would typically happen somewhere else, not <laughs> here in Canada. Yeah. But it did, and I I can't believe it. I, I don't want to get into it too much, but, no. uh, but you know, things like this do bring out the best in people as well. Because oh, totally. people bombarded the businesses Facebook, like mm-hmm. saying like how they support her and like I'm sure people are doing they're sending virtual hugs, but I'm sure she's gonna get some kind of compensation. But yeah, it's too bad. Like people are just harmlessly, especially this day and age right now. Like it's nice to bring some joy to people's lives, and then for it to be disrupted like that, that kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you know, our First Order invasion is one of the last things we have to worry about. So I just, you know, I don't think that was something to be too concerned about. But, yeah, it was cool to see here walking down the street, uh, just somebody. And people were honking their horns and waving out of the car and everything. It was kind of fun and cool. And, you know, so, I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm looking forward to, the next thing I'm really looking forward to in Star Wars is the, the High Republic stuff that comes out starting, I think, in August. So... Yeah, really? though we did see a couple. Well, so the the clone or yeah, the Clone Wars I think finished its final season. They finally got put on, yep. and I know a lot of people really have loved it. I still need to get through. I've never seen the series. I'm like halfway through season one. Mm-hmm. Um, I should go back to that. Actually, I've been meaning to look for a new show, and I forgot that I was watching that. So yeah, maybe I'm gonna go back to that. Thank it's you for bringing good. that up. It is um, actually very good. And then also today we we saw that. Uh, Boba Fett will be in the Mandalorian season two. So a lot of Star Wars news this week. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff and it's, it's good. And you know, I'm, but I, I am super looking forward to the high Republic cause there's so much like leeway there, right? You get to create new characters and do new things. And I think it'll be really fun to see kind of where they take it. Yeah. Uh, when, with the handcuffs off, so to speak. So um, I, I am looking forward to that. And especially the, you know, the fact that it's going to start with books rather than movies, I think is good too. Oh yeah, that'll so. help create some stories that are interesting. Yep. Hopefully they can get Drew Carpetian to write because he's wrote my favorite Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, I don't And some of my favorite Star Wars books in general. Yeah. And and I read the first Darth Bane novel on your recommendation. Very good. I need to go back and read number two now. But I, I don't know who's writing the first um High Republic book, so we'll have to see kind of what that looks like. But yeah, it's uh I, it's something I'm very much looking forward to, and I, and I hope it expands into games as well, and we'll talk a little bit of Star Wars games later. But, yeah, guys, so that was going on this week. Another thing I saw this week in social media, and I, it made me think about it a little bit, and I wanted to kind of pose the question to you guys, but I think I saw it on Twitter. It was trending for a while, and people were like, you know, I can't wait to walk down the aisle, and it's not necessarily, you know, the the, the chapel getting married, but... It's like different aisles. You can't wait to walk down again. And, you know, somebody showed off an aisle in Target and somebody showed off an aisle of like an airplane, like, you know, you know, walking down between the seats. And and uh, just for you guys, like what's something that you kind of maybe took for granted before or didn't think about and you just can't wait to do again now? You know, uh, I shouldn't say now that this is over because, you know, it's not. It's not going to be over for a long time. 
But once things return to some semblance of normalcy, and then once something that you did all the time that you think you don't know, you don't just don't know if you're going to go back to. Any thoughts on that? Hey, Steven? No. Um, I... Yeah, I, this is a, a very difficult question to answer uh, because I, like, besides, like, going out to the movies, there's nothing I did often enough that I mm-hmm. I miss. I, I kind of did everything in moderation because, you know, it costs money to go to the movies. And right. I know there was that movie pass, but even that, like, that went to hell in a handbasket quite quickly. Um, so I'm glad I didn't sun, sign up for that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I hadn't been going to the movies all that much. I've been, most of my like free time that wasn't spent working, um, or going to school was spent on, you know, the show and then, and then now the website. So like, I didn't all have that much free time yeah. to begin with just to do a bunch of random stuff. Like all the stuff that I did, I want to keep doing. So yeah, there's nothing that I did oh. that I'm going to miss. I'll say this real quick before Graham goes here. Like, for me, it is movies, actually, because, you know, I I didn't go to a ton of movies before, but I always sort of took it for granted. Like, well, I'll be able to go if I want to, but, you know, a lot of times I have a nice, you know, I have the 4K TV and stuff, so I'll just wait for it to come out. But there's something to be said for that shared experience in, you know, seeing it on the big screen for a big blockbuster movie, right? And, And I do miss that. That's fun, and I think I will perhaps even go to movies more once it's safe to do so. You know, not not I'm not going to be one of the people that forces it just because I want it to be true. But I uh, I, I see myself going to the movies more than I than I might have in the past. But Graham, any idea on your end? So, like, I don't go to movies all the time, but there's certain movies like, okay, i got to go see this in theater, or I want to go see this in theater. And the example here would be a Quiet Place 2. Uh, we're planning on go see that at theater, and then this... It was pretty early, too, like, when this happened. Uh, John Krasinski's like, okay, like, this is a movie that I want people to go out and enjoy with their families and group like that, and, like... He's like, if there's a chance that something bad could come from it, then he didn't want that. So he's like, we're just going to postpone it. Mm-hmm. So movies definitely stand out. Another thing is like going to like your favorite fast food place mm-hmm. or yeah. like, um, I'll say fast food in quotations where you can go and in order it and take it out. Like it's not fast, fast food, but it's fast food. So now you kind of got to plan for it or you got to like work like around their hours so I kind of miss where you can just do spur to moments like let's go get some chicken rice at this favorite place here and now it's now it's closed or it's reduced hours. So that that is a big thing. Um, as far that's that's about it. Like I don't have a lot of places where I go like all the time. Like Stephen's saying, like more in moderation. But the fact where now you kind of got like plan your day more often, and if you want to. You can't just go to Best Buy now and buy something either. So you got to do like set up like a curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. And I always like that. Sometimes just going to like EB Games, like looking around, seeing what they got there. So none of that right now. So it is definitely different. But now uh, online orders is just shooting through the roof. Like all the delivery drivers are saying this is like Christmas every day now with their deliveries. So it's kind of hectic. So it's kind of nice to. Stay in and avoid that and just order stuff in the mail, I guess. You just can't order your fast food. Yeah, but I do miss not being able to get stuff I buy off Amazon two days later. That's <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true, too. So, I'll say this. There's a couple things that, you know, I just can't see myself doing anytime soon again. One of them I actually very much enjoy, and that's going to sporting events. I don't see that, me doing that, um, anytime soon, even if we're allowed back in. No, I... Like, you're, it's too close contact with too many people, and there's too many unknowns. Like, not a chance. Well, what if they do something similar to what the uh, Korean baseball is doing, where you sit, like, four seats apart? I'm not so worried about the, like, seating arrangement, because I think once you're in your seat, you'll probably be fine, right? Yeah. That just makes me think it's... now, are they going to put up the price of tickets, because there's less yeah, people yeah. now? Who knows? That would be horrible. But the question becomes, like, you guys have all been to games before. Like, think about the experience going into the actual f- building and out of the actual building. You're, you're, it's like sardine cans, you know? You're oh, yeah. See, Angel Stadium's together. really good about that. So I 
I never had that issue. Um, Honda Center is where mm. it gets a little bit questionable. And I know I know people say, well, we'll just, you know, control it and only allow people to leave, you know, at certain times and certain things. And, you know, good luck with that. We see how people are reacting right now when they're told something they don't want to hear. Yeah. You know, and I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see it being something that's going to be as easy to execute as they hope that it is. But the other one, and this isn't something I necessarily enjoy because the food isn't all that great to begin with, but it, there's just like no chance you're getting me to do it anytime soon now. And that's eating at a buffet. Absolutely no chance. I haven't I haven't been to a buffet in forever. The last one I went to was a a Korean bar, uh, Korean buffet, I think, or Chinese buffet. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good, but yeah, I agree. There's yeah, people gonna touch things, and I already know people touch things and put it back. Um, yep. I just throw it out of my mind when I go to there. Um, yeah, I wouldn't go there either. Another thing for me though, like that you just brought up um, that I, I remembered is I haven't been to Disneyland since. Star Wars mm. Land opened, and I went with one of my buddies who worked there. Um, but that's another thing I probably... It's like it's one of those things I miss quite a bit. Because um, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, damn, I miss going to Disneyland. Um, and my sister goes all the time. She has, a, she has a pass, but not me. I just have no time to like go, so I, I didn't buy the pass. But yeah. now, I, yeah, I'm not going there anytime soon. I don't even know if they're going to open anytime soon. There's talk that they're going to be closed in the They're closed till next year. Yeah. I don't so. think that's official yet, but there's talk that that's likely. Oh, it's not official. I, I thought yeah, it was. I don't. But it maybe I it could, is. I don't. I know. could be wrong. I mean, there's new news on all this stuff every day, but like, there's a really good chance the first large event with a big crowd that that I go to is E3 next year. Yeah, it, same. if it happens, <laughs> so. There's a good chance that that's it. You know, I mean, you and I talked about going to Star Wars Celebration this year, right? I think it's pretty likely that's not going to happen. I mean, that oh, the yeah. event's not even going to happen. They haven't officially canceled it yet. But with but with it being such a big, you know, they're having it in Anaheim for a reason to have Disney be a big part of it. You know, with uh, uh, what's it called? I keep forgetting the name of the exhibit now. Star Wars Land. Yeah, or isn't, wasn't it something else? I don't know. Star Wars, whatever the Star Wars thing is. It's, uh, you know, they they wanted that to be like the centerpiece and part of Star Wars Celebration this year. And obviously that's not going to be the case. So, I mean, they're, they're not going to announce the cancellation of Star Wars Celebration during, you know, the week of May 4th. But, but I would anticipate we'll hear that news pretty soon. Um, everything else is being canceled. Tokyo Game Show got canceled this week, too. Um, they, they are going to an online only format, but, but yeah, there's a lot of things. And I, yeah, I wonder what some of our listeners think. Let us know, uh, send us an email mail at generation xbox.com, or, uh, you can tweet at us at uh, generation X underscore box. Let us know kind of some of the things that you can't wait to get back to, or something that there is no chance you're doing again anytime soon. Let us know, you know, and, uh, yeah, I'm interested to hear how people anticipate their lives, you know, changing going forward um, in, in what we call the new normal. So it'll be interesting to see. All right. So before we uh, jump into news, I want to take a real quick moment here, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, talk about our esports segment of the week. And that segment is brought to us by Bet Online. BetOnline.ag. There might be no sports to bet on right now, but there's plenty of esports, including NBA 2K, MLB The Show and more nhl 20 and more to bet on if you're not a sports fan you can bet on plenty of other esports too including overwatch call of duty league of legends and more it's easy to sign up head on over to betonline.ag today sign up and start playing today so let's start with a matchup in the nhl with the pittsburgh penguins heading into montreal to take on graham's favorite team of montreal canadians <laughs> So, the uh, Penguins going in are a a slight, slight underdog. Both teams are a plus here, so you're actually going to make out well if the team you pick wins. But Montreal is a slight favorite. Graham, let's go to you first. Uh, Thoughts on this matchup? Okay, so you said Montreal is the slight favorite. Yep, at home. uh, So, uh, because they're home. Well, I think this is a great 
time to bet on the Penguins. Because okay. I really, I'm pretty confident that the Penguins will handle Montreal pretty good. Uh, the Penguins got Gensel, who he was having a great season, and he's been a great player. He seems to improve year after year. I think this may be his third season. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I do play in hockey pools, and Gensel was the guy I picked last year, and he did really well for me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to get him this year, and obviously Crosby's on the on the Penguins, and that yeah. guy puts up huge they points. They got a little talent. They got that Malkin guy, too. Steven, uh, thoughts on how they match up against Montreal? Yeah, I mean, come on. Montreal's got, like, Thomas Tatar and Brendan Gallagher, I guess, and Max mm-hmm. Domi, but they do not match up with the Penguins. No. I mean, Evgeny Malkin, Sidney Crosby, Chris Letang, Jake Gensel, Patrick Hornquist, all of those are better than any players mm-hmm. on the Canadians. And, I mean, I know it's, you know, it's a video game, so the fact that the Penguins have two really good goalies and Matt Murray and Tristan Yari, um, it, it doesn't help them against, like, Carey Price, who's probably better than – well, I don't know if he's better than both of Matt them. Uh, Price is good, good, but so is both of the, the Penguins goalies. So, yeah, I think it's I, – I, I would be betting all my money on the Penguins right now. Yeah, so for, for me it comes down to if you think that Carey Price, who in NHL 20 is still an elite goaltender, if you think Carey Price can steal this game against Penguins, then you bet Montreal here – but if you look at the pure firepower that Pittsburgh brings to the equation, Malkin, Crosby, um, and Gensel, plus Hornquist, and, and deep, deep lines full of, of, of good talent, not to mention they picked up Jason Zucker from the Wild at the trade deadline, who actually turned into a really good scorer for them. You know, that, that is a deep, loaded team offensively. They are not great defensively, but I think it's too much to overcome, and I take Pittsburgh here. You guys agree? Yes. All oh, yeah. right. This is a good one to bat on for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, absolutely take Pittsburgh here. And in the world of baseball, we are talking in uh, MLB The Show 20. And we have the New York Mets playing home to the Chicago Cubs. Steven, the Cubs are a heavy favorite here. And despite pitching matchups, I don't care who's throwing off the mound here. Like, you take the Cubs' number one pitcher, and I, I still don't think it's as heavy of a of – a, a, you know, match or lopsided of a matchup against the Mets, who have a super deep lineup and are arguably one of the four best teams in baseball. Yeah, I, come on. Um, you know, Anthony Rizzo's good, especially in video games. Um, Javi Baez is a fun player to watch in real life, but he's just a defensive machine in, in MLB The Show. His hitting stats are okay. Chris Bryan is not the Chris Bryan of old. Their outfield is suspect. You know, Kyle Schwarber, Jason Hayward, they are not as good as people thought they would be at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a good Plus catcher. Plus, Jason Castellanos off that team as well. Yeah. So, um, sure. And, you know, they got Wilson Contreras, who's, who's an okay catcher. But, I mean, you look at the Mets – and uh, they got Wilson Ramos at catcher. You know, Pete Alonso, one of the, you know, studs of last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robinson Cano, not great, but he can still hit every now and again. Ahmed Rosario's fantastic. And their outfield, you know, with Conforto and Jeff McNeil, like, already better than anything the Cubs bring to the table. And Cespedes, again, is another player that he's not as good as he might have been, but he's still not bad. Like, I just don't see the Cubs – how the Cubs are such heavy favorites in this. And especially if you've got either DeGrom or Syndergaard going off the mound for the Mets, like they should never, ever, ever with the team they have be this big of an underdog against anyone. So I, I'm taking the Mets all day long here. The Mets have a great team, a deep team. And I really believe they're one of the four best teams in major league baseball this year. So bet the Mets all day long. Mets at a plus 219 over the Cubs at a minus 323. That's insane to me. But, hey, take it. Maybe they know something we don't know, but I'm telling you, take the Mets my, uh, plus 219. And uh, you can place that bet right over at betonline.ag. Betonline.ag, the sponsor of our eSports segment. They offer you the opportunity to play and bet on sports. Even with no sports to bet on right now, you can bet on eSports like MLB The Show, NHL 20, NBA 2K, and more. Uh, if you don't like sports, plenty of games, Call of Duty, Overwatch, uh, Dota, and a lot more to play over there, betonline.ag. Get in the game today, easy to sign up, and uh, you'll be glad you did. All right, guys, let's move on back into the world of Xbox. And Xbox, you know, I heard they were in the news this week. Yeah, yeah just a, a little, little bit. bit. There was a, a thing that happened, but... 
First, uh, you know, they made some news talking about their plans for the summer, guys. And we learned that uh, about the Xbox 2020 program, which basically is monthly Inside Xbox episodes up until the launch of the Series X. Now, they have no official, like, Inside Xbox next month in June. Uh, they, it's basically starting in July. But they're going to have monthly updates heading up to the release of the Series X in presumably November. You know, unless they get outside of what they've done the last couple of cycles. So, guys, thoughts on this, first of all. I mean, I, I they've, they've done a great job saying, hey, we're going to be really transparent about what we're doing. And I want to talk later about what that June window might look like. But, you know, uh, this, this Inside Xbox this week was the first of what this 2020 program is going to look like. But, you know, just on the transparency front, it's great that they're, that they're actually laying out a roadmap this time. Yeah, it's nice to see, especially with where we're at. Like, I mean, if, we, if what happened didn't happen, I think Xbox would just be doing what they usually do, which is a big event in June at E3 and then probably something, another semi-big event at Gamescom with maybe a third event sometime soon. Yeah. Um, that's what would have happened. So obviously, you know, old Rona um, changed everything up. So I, I like the plan, though. It's a good plan. Uh, they started with a third party inside Xbox June, you know, they're going to have something. We don't know what, but we can speculate. Um, but July is going to be the first big one. Uh, Halo Infinite is confirmed to be there. going to be shown there, um, as well as all the games from all their first party studios, though. I do see there's a chance or do think there could be a chance. We don't see a big reveal there. Um, and instead they wait, um, though, or they could do one earlier and then, you know, we see the gameplay for it. I don't know. Um, but that's probably the most likely place we're going to see um, anything big. But, it, yeah. you know, that's not that far away. I can wait until no. July. It's a good month, too. Yeah, July is a good month. And, Graham, you know, they, I, Stephen, I think they've changed their, their approach a little bit because we did see the box reveal that the Game Awards, you know, they've, they've been more transparent and they've gone off of the playbook that, what you would expect from the past, right? And I get what you're saying. They they would have definitely gone big at E3, right? No doubt about that. Yeah. But they, they've at least shown the willingness to go away from the old playbook here this time around and really be responsive to their fans, where I think it's fair to say that Sony's kind of going with the tried and true what's always worked, right? And it's resulting in a little bit of backlash from their fan base because they're not getting the trickle of information that Xbox fans are getting right now. So, Graham, are you happy? Not just not with necessarily what you're hearing, but the fact that you're hearing a good amount on a regular basis. Uh, yes, I'm glad, like you said, you're being very transparent, letting us know. And they have a huge emphasis on games right now. And that's the big thing that Xbox has always been slow out of the gate. Like, they have the console... But the games was not there. And it seems like they're like, okay, games is our priority. It's like, we know we got the box, and that's all figured out. Now let's focus on games. Let's get it out there. Let's let them know. And they didn't start with their big ones first. They went third party. And a lot of them that we did not know existed and were excited for. So I think this was a great way to do it. And I still think something big is going to come in June. Because they had that time booked. So I think they're still going to like take advantage of that time. Uh, I could be wrong just because well, th- everything's maybe. all in a whack now. But they but, don't have an actual digital event going on that Sunday. Yeah. Anymore. So. Like, that's done. They did say they're going to be part of IGN's, what, Summer of Gaming or whatever it's called? Okay. No, so, Summer of Gaming is the Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley, whatever the IGN one's called. They, they are going to be part of that. So we'll see what that looks like. And that could be more third party. It could be whatever. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But let, let's jump into what they showed yesterday at Inside Xbox. And we saw a decent amount of games, guys. And we'll talk about whether they were the right games and all that afterward. But uh, let's, let's just go through the list. So we saw a game that this game is made by one guy in china which is super impressive because that is that, crazy i know yeah it has a triple a look to it it's a in a feel you know so that's really impressive bright memory infinity 
Um, I, I prefer to call it Xbox the game because it's it's literally the shooter and racer we've all been waiting for <laughs> all in yeah. one. So, no, but it... Did anybody think it might be Titanfall at first? No. Okay. I thought it was going to be Crisis. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I so, did too. Crisis, I mean. That was my guess. So I saw the wall running and and the grapple hook and I just... You know, it had a little bit of a titanfall you feel to me. A little bit, yeah, with yeah. that, for sure. So, but it looks pretty damn cool. And I think it was a good game to start with. What do you guys think? Yeah, um, it got me intrigued for sure. I like the mix of... Like, I was like, oh, another shooter. And then they grappled a guy and, like, hack and slashed him. And you're fighting, like, Roman legionnaires, yeah, basically. Yeah, like, swords. And, like, and then, you know, I'm like, that's cool. And I thought, like, the thing that I picked up on was the weather. Um, I think it looked fantastic. It did. Um, and then, you know, the gameplay, obviously, is important. But I just noticed the weather, and I was like, damn. Yeah. That's a good look. Um, yep. But, you know, the, yeah, the game looked look very fun and i I'm, I'm excited i know it's it's got a lot of positive reviews so uh bright memory episode one is on steam right now um i think it released back in like january of last year i want to say um but it has good reviews uh so you know we should probably see something similar and i know they're probably a bigger budget too i know it's just one guy but you know he's got some money coming in so oh, yeah. yeah so no I, I'm, I'm impressed then it definitely got my attention. I agree with you on the the visuals of the game. It looks fantastic, and the combat looks fun. So, and it was gameplay. So yay for that. Yeah. Um, so next up, we saw Dirt Five, guys. This is probably the most we're going to see Dirt Five until, um, well, we'll see plenty of Dirt Five until Forza Eight gets unveiled. <laughs> now, I don't know if they'll show off much more Dirt Five. It's going to be a lot of Forza after that. But Dirt Five visually again looks fantastic. Yeah. But, yeah. Thought, any thoughts? I mean, lots of different locations, too. I know we saw, like, Arizona and Norway and everywhere in between. Yeah, so, I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, they actually improved the graphics for the Fast and Furious game, because remember what that looked like. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh, Dirt 5, and I was like, after a while, I was like, oh, this probably Dirt. And then I was right, it was a new Dirt. Um, yeah, no, it looks great. A lot of different locations, a lot of different weather effects, which, again, you know, you, apparently I really like the weather. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but, like, in racing games, I, I, driving in the snow was awesome. I loved yeah. what Forza Horizon 4 did, um, and I'm, I'm liking what I saw from the trailer of Dirt 5. When that, like, lightning hit in that one little bit of gameplay oh, yeah. they show, yep. like, that looked absolutely stunning and, and amazing. And then, I don't know, um, when we listen to the dev... Or the development director's interview at the very end. It was after all the gameplay mm-hmm. was shown of everything. Um, we we also heard that two of the biggest names in gaming will be doing voice acting for this game. Uh, Nolan North and Troy Baker, which yeah. is pretty awesome. They're very well known. Very popular. And if you don't know the yeah. names, I guarantee if you play video games, you've heard their voices. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yes. So, guys, thoughts on Scorn? Scorn is... You know, it's hard to say what the game is about, but it looks cool. Does it? Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. I think it looks, well, okay, so it looks intriguing. Like, I, we don't know enough about it to say it looks cool or fun, but it does <laughs> look intriguing. I saw a lot of um, does. genitalia-esque looking things in that trailer, and then there was a lot of really creepy elements in that trailer and i was like i'm not i'm not a hard pass it reminds me of some of the early death stranding stuff we saw no i mean maybe a little just a little i mean not not like you know beat for beat but just in vibe and stuff like that so yeah it remind me of aliens that's what it it does and it has that strong alien vibe it has that atmosphere doesn't it yeah i got that more than death stranding but i think uh you know, I think, I don't know, I want to see more about it, and, and it is intriguing. Again, no gameplay, which, you know, is a theme that we'll, we'll cover here in a bit. But, so it's really it's really tough to know what this game is. But uh, I'm a little intrigued, and I, I want to see more. So, Chorus, a game about a space warrior that's on a mission to destroy the people that created her. And this had, like, a super control feel for a little while. Like, just the, the red... And the, yes. uh, having her walk down in that, that like, bridge type thing, you know? Yeah. yeah, but then you start hearing voices, and I'm like, is yep. this, 
like copying Hellblade. Um, and I think it took like, well, it's probably been in development since before Control was out. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it took. Oh, for sure. But it might have from Hellblade, though. Hellblade's been out for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does look cool, like the space combat. I mean, we haven't seen a space combat type game in a, in a while, especially a big one. No. Um, there's been some indie titles on certain consoles. Um, I mean, we, I know we have, like, Rogue Galaxy and um, Elite Dangerous, but... Well, then you could do it in multiplayer in the Battlefront games, too, right? So Sure, but those are... I'm not going to say... They're not on rail shooters, but they're definitely confined to one. Sure. Like, we haven't seen a strict storytelling-esque game set in space, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because, yes, Rebel Galaxy does, like, have a story, but you can kind of have freedom to do your own thing. And Elite Dangerous almost... I don't even think it has a story. Um, at least I never find it when I play that game. I just go traveling from different um, star like galaxies between to different galaxies because that's fun. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see a new spaceship game. Yeah, for sure. So, guys, next game up is a game I, I watched a couple different. I watched the show itself twice. And then I watched a couple different, like, reaction things, too, because I kind of wanted to see what the community's reaction is and what the vibe is and um, the take to it. So this game got shit on in both of those that I watched because it's a sports game, and you're not it's not going to get that treatment here because we love sports games, and, uh, and I think the underlying story about what it's going to do with next gen and the transition to next gen is the bigger story here. So Madden 21 was shot. Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl MVP, showed up. Still shouldn't have been the MVP, but whatever. He's great. I <laughs> love him as a player. But he showed up to talk about Madden 21. And uh, we know that's coming. Hopefully in July, same window. I'm really hoping it's the same window as last year. But, guys, the bigger story here is that EA is going to have this game. It's not part of the uh, smart delivery program per se, but if you buy Madden 21 in July on Xbox One, you get the upgrade to the Xbox Series X automatically in you know, as soon as you get it. So the, the key is you have to buy it by December 31st on Xbox One, and then you have to have a Series X by when's even March something? 22nd. There you go. So there are some there are some dates involved and and that's what separates it from smart delivery because there's no known like due dates per se with mm-hmm. smart delivery but with with this there is and I think that this is a way where EA can take care of their customers on both consoles and do this hopefully because guys I'll be really surprised if PlayStation does anything comparable to smart delivery until they're or unless they basically have to which i think we're getting to the point where it might be because mm-hmm. uh, where they might have to because there's a lot of games coming to that smart delivery feature yeah so i think when we see more of the the real heavy hitters do it now we've seen cyberpunk say they're doing it when we see more even more of the heavy hitters say we're doing this i, I think that might be something that you know is it makes the case for people early on when they're when they're deciding which one to buy, so I'll be curious to see if what Bethesda does. I am too. I think they're the mm-hmm. wild card in this. Yes, I think so. if they take advantage, mm-hmm. um, I was a little worried about Ubisoft, but they they're doing it with Assassin's Creed. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah. It's really if Bethesda does it and then PlayStation doesn't, I think that looks really poor on them. Yeah. So we're, we didn't see any gameplay out of Madden Twenty One. We uh, we saw yeah we did it. it just wasn't for Madden twenty one yeah I mean we saw like throughout the years right yeah we saw gameplay from like Madden ninety three yep so that counts but anyway uh well but we'll see more of that at EA Play next month and June eleventh sizing up to be a pretty awesome day so, oh yeah between EA Play and the Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk show so that'll be pretty sweet. But anyway, we'll see more on Madden 21 then. Uh, we saw a new trailer, guys, for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Guys, I was super impressed, and I, I think the trailer was just good. Yes, I agree. I really had no idea 
what it was or what it was going to be about. And mm-hmm. then when it finally said, I'm like, ah, kind of makes sense now. Yeah, I, I just think the trailer kind of set like this cool vibe and and it looks fun and it looks interesting. And it yeah, it reminded me a lot of like We Happy Few when we the first time we saw We Happy Few. So any uh, Stephen, any thoughts on that? Yeah, so I agree. Like, I did not realize what it was at first, and I thought it was. I was like, "This is like We Happy Few," except if We Happy Few mm-hmm. was good. Um, and then, <laughs> Happy Few like, was good at first. Like, you know, well, the, the opening was. mission was yeah. good, and then it was just another survival like mm-hmm. horror game. Um, I've been following uh, Bloodline 2's development path for a little while, but then I had stopped, and I didn't realize it had put out a couple more trailers in between the last I saw. Um, which was a little after E3, and then this one. Um, so I, I didn't realize... I, I think they changed the art style a little bit. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but it's not what I remember seeing when I watched gameplay of the game um, like a year ago. But I, I've i been super intrigued by the, the Vampire the Masquerade series. Uh, I think it's super interesting. I've watched... I haven't played the first one, but I've watched a Let's Play on it, and just like... So, it, you know, it, for those that don't know, it's it's your, it's a vampire, like, clan um, that's consisting of a group of different sects of vampires. So you have, like, the vampires that are, like, super ugly that have to stay underground. I forget the name of them. But then you have, like, the high-class vampires, you know, the, uh, you know, drinking tea with their pinkies in the air type of thing. Mm-hmm. But they all, you know, kind of work together in, think of, like, a UN, but for vampires. Um, to, you know, make sure that they don't get found out by the, the mortal world, right? Because they don't want to deal with all that stuff. And so there's a lot of really interesting ways the stories, like, can go just from that. Um, and then I liked the first game I, I watched. It. it was very interesting. I'm really excited for Bloodlines 2. I cannot wait to play it. Um, yeah, what about you guys? Are you you going to get it day one? Yeah, this is a, this is a buy for me. Um, I, I'm, I'm always like this with Next Gen, though. Like, I yeah, buy I know. everything right away. Like, I bought um, Dead Rising on day one. I bought Rise on day one last time. Yeah. You know? And I was excited for those. So, I I don't think this game will be disappointing. I think this game looks good. I, you know, I look forward to seeing gameplay. I'm not even going to say I want to see more on this. As it stands right now, this is a buy for me. So, yeah. It does look interesting. Um, I would like to see a little bit more. I know you said you didn't, Tyler, but... Mm. I would just to more hash out what type of game it is, but it does look fun and interesting, so I'm yeah. definitely intrigued. So if you like uh, those puzzle type games with some, you know, exploration, discovery, all that type of thing, and some good puzzles along the way, Call of the Sea might be for you. That was the next game they showed off, and uh, very different vibe in that game, which was kind of a welcome change because we saw a lot of dark and you know post-apocalyptic dystopian yeah. nightmare hellscape yeah. games yeah. so this was like bright and colorful and all that so uh guys thoughts on this uh, you know it's uh it looks like that fun type of game i, I can't imagine it would be 60 bucks necessarily but it looks yeah. like- well i don't care what the price is it's coming to game pass so that's true i'm not paying for it so yeah. it looks like we uh, got it anyways yeah i'll play it i like puzzle games um I, kind I, of reminded me of the witness games. without as um oh, what's the word not general but um generic yeah no <laughs> oh my gosh i'm blanking it this is definitely more directed than the witnesses okay. it's very vague yeah. yeah is the witness but okay yeah i mean the game looks good and i i look forward to getting my hands on and playing it so the next game up guys is something that is an absolute positive day one for me and that is the medium uh, from Bloober Team, the team behind Layers of Fear and Blair Witch. Uh, I love those games anyway. I love the work Bloober Team generally does. This is a third-person horror game. It looks like it has a little bit more of the action element to it. And uh, bringing over a, a legendary composer as well from Silent Hill. Silent Hill 2. So, uh, you know, guys, uh, thoughts on what we saw that the game looks super, like visually looks super impressive. And just going off what I know about Bloober Team, like I can't wait to play it. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it looked good. I'm not a horror fan. Mm-hmm. But it definitely felt more open than any of their previous stuff, which means I might think about playing it. But when you're confined... Though, I, I, I watched the developer interview for that, too, and it seems like you go into a, like, hotel, which, at that point, I'm done. Um, <laughs> that's way too confining, and then you just... Because all these horror games have jump scares, and jump scares are, like, mm-hmm. the the easy way out in, in the horror world, um, and not a fan of those. So, yeah, I'm not going to be... Well, I'll, I'll tell you, like, Layers of Fear was not jump scare. It really wasn't. It it effed with your mind. Yeah. And that's what did it. Like Maybe I'll play Layers mm-hmm. of Fear. But Blair Witch, no. No thank you. <laughs> I, I still love the fact that when you got to the first like stick thingy, you just shut the game off. You were done. <laughs> I didn't just shut the game off. I removed it off it. of my console. <laughs> and not because it was bad. Let's just be clear there. But the ending was horrible. We'll I put know, it that way. I know you don't like the ending. <laughs> but see, you didn't you didn't uninstall it because the game's terrible. You uninstall it because it's definitely not for you. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So let's see. We have the ascent up next. Uh, again, dystopian future. But thoughts on this game, guys? Uh, it's like a Diablo clone, but with yes. guns. That's what I was um, thinking too when I saw it. So I, you know. It's hard to do the Diablo games well anyways, and you throw guns in the mix, and that just yeah. turns me off. Um, you know, when I first saw it, I was thinking it was an XCOM game. Because mm-hmm. it's kind of like that style. I thought it was going to be like an Outer Worlds game until I saw the combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, um, like, the story sounds cool. I mean, it's your typical corporations or enslaving people or... Yep. Not enslaving, but enslaving, basically. Um, that type of story. Yeah. I don't know. It looks okay. Uh, those that like that, you know, the gunplay that probably, I'm not going to say twin stick shooter. I don't think it's that. It definitely seemed like Diablo with guns. Yeah, it yeah. is. So like old school Diablo, not mm-hmm. Diablo three. Right. So I, to me, like this game looks fine. I'm not sure it's something I would have necessarily shown off like the first time I'm showing third party games. And that's not no slight against the game. Right. The game could be super awesome and really fun. It just didn't stand out to me. You know, yeah, I, it's not the first game I think of when I think of last or you know whatever Thursdays right. inside Xbox. Right, and that and like I said, no slight to the game. Like they worked their ass off on it. It shows the game looks fun, just not not a console seller. I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sure. not every game needs to be. No, it, I, doesn't. it doesn't. And you know what? If it comes out, if it's smart about when it comes out and it's not crowded by stuff. It's very possible I'll give it a go because I just might not have something to play depending on how spread out these games are. I I think a lot of them are coming next year. So this game might come out in the middle of like June, which has nothing most of the time. And, and you're like, you're dying for a new game and it does seem to be co-op because it, you know, like I said, it's like Diablo, um, with guns Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so it's possible. I just yeah, if it comes out surrounded by a bunch of big games, it's it's not gonna be a, not gonna be a game for me. But yeah. who knows? Who knows? Right. Time will tell. Yeah. So up next we saw, excuse me, a second extinction reclaim Earth. Yeah. Guys, thoughts on this one? Yeah, going uh, from the dystopian future to yeah. post apocalyptic Earth, <laughs> um, real change of pace there. But Graham, sorry. <laughs> well, I was gonna say those poor dinosaurs, and how easily did they just fall apart by being shot at? <laughs> like, I thought dinosaurs were a little more uh, sturdy, little sturdier than that. Yeah, they might be a baby dinosaurs though. And yeah. then you get you see the giant T Rex come out because you just you know killed all their children, and then it just eats you alive. That'd be funny. Yeah, I heard it basically called a, a dinosaur slaughter game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was kind of cheering on the dinosaurs, but they were yeah. losing big time. So I you don't know, know I, what they're shooting them with, but they were like, like you said, they were te- destroying them. <laughs> it would be kind of fun if if one of these companies would make a game where you play as like the dinosaur or something, you know, stopping itself from extinction. And I know we're seeing a uh, a version of that with with sharks coming out. I think it's man, it's not manhunt, man eater. I think it is. Um, but, you know, we always see the, the other way where you have to fight off the dinosaurs. Yeah. Let's see one where the dinosaurs are trying to fight off the hunters, you know. They don't I think that'd be cool. extinct again. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I mean, that's the name, Second Extinction. Like, yeah, you're, you're trying to re kill all the dinosaurs off. I yeah. mean, come on. Because, <laughs> like, there's some dinosaurs that are nice, like the plant eaters. Like, maybe they'll step yeah. on you by accident. You're going to kill. They don't, they don't oh, even step on you. L- Littlefoot or. Yeah, oh, Littlefoot. Or Sarah. La- yeah, or, Land or, of the Land or, Before Time. Or Petrie. Yeah. Or yeah Spike. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are ruining my childhood, Xbox. Yeah, I know. Or whoever, <laughs> makers of the game. Yeah. Nah, I'm kidding. Yeah. Kind of. Right. So, <laughs> all right. Up next, uh, second to last, actually, we have uh, Yakuza's Like a Dragon and introducing more turn-based combat into the series. So, uh, thoughts on this one? Like, it looks cool to me, and I'm not sure. I'm not a turn-based guy so much. But, uh, like, the most turn-based you're going to get out of me is, like, South Park, those games. Mm-hmm. But, you know, thoughts from either of you. This is a series that I think has largely been on PlayStation, right? And uh, coming over uh, to the Xbox side now. And any, any interest there, thoughts there? And, and did it stand out to you? I know Steven is a fan of these types of games more than me. Uh, it looked a lot interesting, but I, to me, I feel like I need to go back and play the other ones, and I'm like, don't know it. But I know it's very popular. It's got a really strong fan base, so people got excited for it. So, uh, what about you, Stephen? You excited for this? Yeah, um, I will say as a point before I go in, like the way the trailer made it look was it like an action game, which the old Yakuza games are. They're like beat em ups you know, where you're, you punch them and knock people out and that sort of thing. Um, this is going to be turn-based. I thought this was a spin-off at first. I didn't realize Yakuza, y- Yakuza 7 was going to be named Like a Dragon, because I knew Yakuza 7 was turn-based, and mm. then I didn't know that was Like a Dragon. But, yeah, this is huge news that Yakuza is coming to Xbox day and date. Um, it has been exclusively on uh, PlayStation, um, at least yeah. console wise. Now, some of the, the games have come over to Xbox and they're, they're, all of them are coming at some point. Um, but we already saw Yakuza Kiwami and Yakuza zero, um, which was the prequel. And then the first game remastered, uh, and then we're going to get Kiwami two. And then hopefully Yakuza three through, through six. I know, I think Yakuza four is one of the best games in the series, um, it would be interesting to see if Judgment comes over. That was the spinoff. It was exclusive to PlayStation so far. It just came out. Um, but I know, yeah, a lot of people love the Yakuza games because they, they're, they're probably even better than Grand Theft Auto with the amount of stuff you can do that's not game related, if that makes sense. So, you know, you can go play darts and things like that. Um, karaoke, all of that stuff, but it, it does it better. I know a lot of people love, things. love that series for that. So yeah, but Yakuza, I think zero is on game pass. One of the Yakuza is on game pass. And I want to say the other one was games with gold. Um, or they both might be on game pass right now. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I do know one of them is. So yeah, you can check the series out. It is going turn based. I'm still going to get it. Um, because well, there's might not be a lot to play on the series X, you know, when this game comes out. So you get to expand your horizons a little bit when consoles release. Okay. Before your backlog grows. So, guys, the the finale, the centerpiece of the game Wrong. Show. Sorry, Tyler. You I'm missed sorry. one. Um, Scarlet Nexus. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't shortchange me on my f- no. favorite game from inside Xbox. Uh, Bandai Namco, hu- uh, like, hugely favorite um, developer slash publisher of mine. Uh, Scarlet Nexus, made by them. It's going to be a game where, like... It reminded me of Astral Chain a little bit, um, the Switch exclusive, with the art style and the combat. But you got these like monsters that are made of plants invading, and it sounds like it. it but the monsters are actually kind of creepy, or they're they're really well made. Um, but I'm super excited for that game. I cannot wait for that game to come. I don't know. Did you guys yeah, like that? No, it looks we, fantastic, and I apologize for skipping that. Yeah, how <laughs> dare you? Unintentional, but um, no, it looks fantastic, and and definitely stands out it's definitely a step up from like plants versus zombies yeah. the way that looks well, but, when uh, i saw the the gameplay for it i'm like oh this because first it's like hoping up with cinematics and i'm like i don't know what this is or where it's going but then when i saw the gameplay i'm like oh it's this type of game so it does look interesting and like tyler's saying i was thinking plants versus zombies but obviously it's not that game and it's totally different but there is evil plants <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so, no, it looks good. And now to the finale of the Inside Xbox show. Let's talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where we were promised throughout the show exclusive world premiere gameplay of uh, of Valhalla. <laughs> we saw... We saw stuff running in Game Engine. And I think that was interpreted by some as gameplay. But we'll talk about that piece in a second. But just what we saw of AC Valhalla. Guys, thoughts on that? And, you know, the game looks pretty damn awesome, doesn't it? Just despite the fact that we didn't get to see really any gameplay. It does. Yeah, I did not need to see this trailer because it wasn't a gameplay trailer. Right. Um, I did enjoy the part where he threw the axe and then like has two of them still to fight people. Yep. I mean, a little look at the siege, but yeah, I mean the rest, like I was sold on this game from the announced trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, and cause Assassin's Creed has been one of my favorite series. Um, and then I, I did, I liked what they did with the two last ones. I mean, I didn't love the combat switch. I know a lot of people did, but I did like the, everything else that was changed. Mm-hmm. So I was sold. This trailer was probably hurt, did more harm than help. Um, especially they tried to walk it back a little bit as we got closer and they were like, well, it's not a gameplay. It's going to be like game look or some, I forget the name they, they called it. Yeah. But then I think even their YouTube page said gameplay, um, when they released the trailer after it was shown. So, well, on inside Xbox, like across the, the lower third, you know, at the yes. bottom, it said gameplay like repeatedly throughout it for, for Assassin's Creed. So, the promise was there. Graham, before we jump into that, just thoughts on the game, like how, what you saw in the trailer, and, you know, just thoughts on that. Yeah, no, for, it did get me more excited for the game. Not much more excited, yeah. because basically we just saw all that before in the reveal trailer. Yeah, it's a little um, different this time, but yeah, more of the same, right? Yeah, more of the same, mm-hmm. but I was excited for it when I first saw it so it just kind of brought that hype back but i was expecting a little more like i think most people were but yeah i'm still excited for that game and i didn't see anything that turned me off from it it just yeah a little bit more excited okay so let's jump into the gameplay piece now because we had some controversy about the inside xbox episode and i think some deservedly so where You know, people were unhappy that Xbox promised a lot of gameplay, and they did from the first time they talked about this. You know, world premiere gameplay running on Xbox Series X for third-party games, and the reality is there wasn't much of that, guys. Nope. So, we only saw a handful of games that actually had some gameplay running on it. Like, actual, you know, controller in hand, playing the game gameplay. So... You know, I, I think we can all agree that there should be a HUD on screen, you know, in order to call it gameplay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I okay. think there's a possibility some of those games were gameplay, but were shown through, like, the replay system where you can turn the HUD off. And no, a lot of games I mean, have that fair. where, you know, you can watch video and make, like, cinematic experiences, even though it's gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, which is what I think Dirt might have done. Um, I would agree in, with that, yeah. in some parts. But yes, I agree. For the most part, it should be someone's playing the game when it's gameplay. You know, all they could have needed to do here was show one little piece of like 10 seconds to 15 seconds of combat where uh, Eivor or whatever the dude's name is, um, is like fighting off the, uh, you know, a bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. Or one of the Englishmen for 15 seconds or even less. And that would have made everyone happy. And they kind of, you know... In honor of, uh, you know, May the 4th, and, and our favorite character, Tyler, Obi-Wan Kenobi from the mm-hmm. third movie. Yeah. Um, here, Ubis- Ubisoft, you have done that yourself. Yes. Yeah, so, the, the other thing I'll say before we jump into, you know, the, the meat of it here is there was a lot of outrage about this. And I think some of it was a little unfair because, guys, I mean, just being completely objective, Xbox has done almost everything right in the the information reveal here throughout this process starting with you know the game awards last year and arguably going back to e3 last year where they you know showed it off for the first time they said it's coming holiday you know 2020 blah 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 but at the game awards when they showed off the box nobody was expecting that and then they've been really transparent about 
you know, the specs of the console and all of that, rather than making everybody wait and trying to, you know, hide it and reveal it all in one shot, this was a misstep, no doubt. And I'm not for, you know, I'm not saying that it wasn't, but I think it's, you know, I think it's fair to take a step back and say, well, they've had nothing but good intentions this whole time and they've been transparent. They've been doing this right. And I, I think that we give them an opportunity to learn from this and and say, and they did acknowledge, you know, Aaron Greenberg said in a tweet, let me get it here so I can just read it. Said, had we not said anything and just shown May Inside Xbox show like we did last month, I suspect reactions might have been different. Clearly, we set some wrong expectations, and that's on us. We appreciate all the feedback and can assure you we will take it all in and learn as a team. So I think that should be the end of it. And I think that we should move on and, and go forward into whatever they show in IGN's thing in June and then into the first party in July. But but for this moment, like, you promised gameplay and you didn't show it. You know? Yeah, and it, you know, when we saw the, the live look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the, the, like, cinematic trailer, mm-hmm. the very first one they, they announced, like, they said the gameplay, like, world premiere of gameplay would be at Inside Xbox. Yep. Um, so both of them kind of messed up, um, and I, I think Ubisoft knew it because the, the creative director of Assassin's Creed, like, apologized, but mm-hmm. didn't apologize, but he apologized on Twitter. Um and you know, someone in our Discord call it the Todd Howard apology, which I thought was funny. <laughs> um, but that's yeah, that's what it was. And it, it was, um, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Like, come on, let's not go like try to. Yeah, let's first put, of all, let's, sending let's, death let's threats for any reason. And torches down. Yeah, you know. And I'm not saying people are sending death threats, and I know. think like a complaint about this is rightly deserved. You don't need to tag them, but you can be like, hey. You know, because I, you know, I even tweeted out on our channel, like, you know, I did I miss the gameplay? Right. <laughs> like, I, I thought I was missing something there. I was like, did mm-hmm. I not see it? And I, I'm being stupid, but no, there was no gameplay. It's not that big of a deal, but come on. I mean, you should know better. Don't promise gameplay. Mm-hmm. There's not actually going to be gameplay. And I think some of these companies have forgotten what gameplay actually is. Yeah, yeah I agree. So can we all agree that the MVP of Inside Xbox was Aaron Greenberg's background? <laughs> the yes with the fridge that was fantastic yeah. now the dis mvp what's the opposite of an mvp least valuable um, player yeah what have been aaron greenberg's camera right it's <laughs> awful come on xbox uh <laughs> it was that espn come on come on man yeah like come on, man <laughs> You could have you give your your main person like one of your biggest guys at the company and one of the faces of the company like a camera that's like 360p I, I just for an inside awesome Xbox. That the head of marketing for Xbox has a super blurry, like, you know, camera. That... <laughs> was he using the Kinect? He might have been. Maybe it was. <laughs> now, I, I mean, we're, we're kidding because his background did make up for everything else. But I mean, it, there's some. Uh, some questionable oversights by by Microsoft yeah. there. Well, and I, think, <laughs> but, I think part of it too is they're going for the realism of the work from home and all of that, right? And, I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah. They nailed it. You <laughs> certainly did. They got right? that down. <laughs> all he missed was like the dog jumping in or the cat jumping on him, and you know the kids running in and singing yeah, and the, stuff. The kid yeah. running in from the background. Oh, that right. that that was a from that news article or that news segment yeah. from even before this all happened. I remember um, that. Where the kid, that was one of the funniest things in the world. But I, I, my favorite throughout all this was, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, the weatherman who was doing the work, you know, from home report, and his cat's his up on the windowsill behind him, uh, licking in a place that you shouldn't be. Oh, really? Well, cats can lick wherever they want. They're cats. Right. They don't right. know better. <laughs> they do what so. they want. But um. No, or the, the the guy that, you know, was in his underwear doing the, the report. Like, he had the, the dress shirt and, and tie on, but then didn't have any pants. Um, but they could see it. That was pretty funny, too. Uh, no, we're just ribbing Microsoft a little here. Like, it, I thought the showing was good. I don't know about you guys. No, uh, I thought it was I, fun. You know, obvious, yeah, obviously they had the, the couple missteps. Um, but they're really small, and I'm really excited to see what they're doing. Um, and Or what they're going to do, or what's coming. Because we know what they're planning on doing, they've told us, which is 
much more than the other guy. Um, infinitely more than the other guy. Yeah, like I but, said, I think Sony's playing by the old playbook still. I think yeah. they think they're just going to have this event to show it off. But I don't know how you do that, how you do a stage event right now. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I don't either. And I, don't and either. I think, be and, and, you know, I'll go as far as to say, and I don't want to sound like fanboy here, but Sony has always had the advantage of a super passionate fan base that, like, loses their shit at this stuff, you know? And, I mean, you remember the visuals of, like, people standing and holding their heads and, like, crying, you know? No, they like, dude, they're like... Uh, the Seahawks. They're pumping crowd noise in. They They're pumping be. crowd noise into but that stadium. what do you do? Like, how is it going to look and how is it going to come across when you take that element out? You know, like when they did the, the intermission E3 presentation where the crowd was just like confused. Like, what the hell is happening right now? Like, it, it showed there. That crowd was not as into it and, and it definitely affected do you think there's happened. a chance we haven't seen anything because Sony's trying to figure out a way where they can, you know, do a presentation to, like, 200 people over Zoom to try to get that crowd noise back or something like that? I just don't see don't the logistics so. of that. No, I, I think, for me, you know, you and I talked about this off air, and I'll give you the credit for it because you said it, and I think you're right. I think Sony's playing the long game here because they don't want to commit to a price point yet. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't me that came up with that. I yeah. I, I stole that from me. Je- from Jeff Keeley, mm-hmm. um, but he was talking about it. Someone he, he was talking to someone I can't remember who, and they said that um, they they think that Microsoft is just going to wait until Sony releases the price because Sony can't go down on the price. Like they're struggling right now to go down on the price and then undercut them. Mm-hmm. And I could see that happening. I don't know if it'll be by a hundred dollars, which was what he said. Um, but if it's four fifty, I could easily see them coming in at four, or three ninety nine, because you know that makes it like infinitely better, and that's factual. Like three ninety nine so feels so much my, less than four. Here's my question to you guys, based on that, Graham. I'm gonna go to you first with this. The given that, do you think the right time to give the release date and the price? is in June at the IGN event or as, or as part of that or after the first party show in July, maybe late July, early August, you do release date and price point. Which one of those do you think is the better move and which one do you think is more likely that they'll actually do? Uh, I think July and August. Okay. I don't think they're going to do it with the IGN thing. I think they're going to do it as their own thing probably after the the first part uh, first party titles and they're like and it's coming to the series x and it will be released at this date at this price and if they don't say the date then they'll say the price at least okay steven that's a tough one i really do think microsoft's waiting for sony i could see sony doing something in june not at the ign thing but on their own um i would imagine playstation will have done it by then that's fine. Uh, but I, I think Xbox is just going to wait. I don't think mm-hmm. they... in. From what it sounds, from what I've been hearing, I don't think they're in any rush to, to announce. So here's what I think. Here's my prediction, I guess. I think we're going to see the Lockhart at the IGN thing. Yeah, I, think, I could see that. I think we'll see it for the first time and, and have its existence confirmed. And we'll know what that looks like and what the specs are. There's no way we get priced, though. Absolutely no way. But, and, the, and they'll announce that it's going to release day and date with, you know, the Series X, right? And, okay, caveat. Yep. There's no way we get the price for that unless it's like 200 bucks. Yeah, that's fair. So, even then, I, I don't think so because everybody would just go pre-order that and nobody would pre-order the Series X, you know? Well, I mean, so, okay, that's fair. So I see what you're getting at, but yeah, I think I think they still wait on price point, and I I think they show that they're they're gonna show first party games then in July to really build this hype, right? And I promise you, after yesterday, we're gonna see some Halo Infinite gameplay, even if it's just 20 seconds, doesn't matter. We're gonna see some, and we're gonna see some Forza gameplay. We're gonna see something else, and we're gonna see a reveal of a game that we haven't seen yet. Does it rhyme with Mabel? It might. <laughs> that that would be my prediction wouldn't it be yours i mean I, you know 
we predicted it like every year forever that we've been predicting. Yeah, things. but I, I, you're right. We but I think in the, the past time we do get it. Yeah, but in the past we got caught up in the whole we want it now. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, isn't now the right time, really? Like strategically. Right, and if it doesn't happen, <laughs> then we're just gonna, gonna give up. we're going to all agree we're never predicting it ever again. Well, yeah, because that's when we'll hear it. Because remember, I swore I will never predict Bioshock again, and then it got announced. Sure, New yeah. Bioshock. So here we go. But no, I can see them waiting on price point until July or August. Build the hype around the games and get people so excited to have this thing that it almost doesn't matter what it costs. But the, I think they'll announce release date and price points for both boxes in that late July, early August window because Sony can't wait any longer than that. And I can see Sony having a big event either during E3 week or sometime in July where they kind of lay everything out. But if you're Xbox, you can't wait long after Sony drops that info. Like release date and price point, you can't wait long to do yours. Because people will go and pre-order the PS5. I agree. Which is why I think Microsoft already has a pre-recorded show on it. And <laughs> is just holding it. What if they do? I, the thing, I, I'm not even they, kidding. What if they do the thing where it's like, you know... Well, you just watched Iron Man 3 last night, right? So, like, when, yes. when the Mandalorian cuts in on TV. So, they, like... Sony's wrapping up. You know, they just show their price. Point, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you see the static on the screen. There's Phil. <laughs> that'd be funny but i'm not even kidding i've been thinking about this like mm -hmm. for the last 20 minutes i i do think microsoft probably has this pre-recorded and is just mm -hmm. waiting and none of the things that they're gonna say is gonna be any sort of time related thing um besides the future like futuring time yeah so w the day it comes out but yeah they're gonna announce everything in they already have it recorded i i i really can't see them not mm -hmm. um because they haven't an, and I, I agree that they cannot wait too long after sony to announce like if sony announces in june they can't wait till august i agree so i think it's largely dependent on whatever sony does there and I, there's one other thing i want and then there's <laughs> this is just uh because i still remember in 2013 it was so petty and childish but xbox if, if sony chooses not to do their equivalent of smart delivery and i don't think they will i really don't um I, Xbox has to do a little bit on screen about this is how you play the games you bought on Xbox One on your Xbox Series X, and all it is is just turning the damn console on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, because you got to get that payback. It was one of the most petty moments ever, but it also was super impactful. Oh, people ate that shit up. Dude, I, rem I remember it. Plain as day. I can see it in front of me today, se seven years later. It would be funny to see the reactions if Microsoft did that. Because you know, <laughs> people are terrible when it comes to being hypocritical. You know, and... go, go a step further and say, like, this is how you play these games on PlayStation 5 and show you buying it again. <laughs> and then here's how you play it on Xbox Series X. And all you do is turn it on. And... They should, but I cannot see Phil doing that. Mm, he's taken a swipe or two in the past. Like he's, he's really smart about it, but I, you know, if they're ever going to do it, now's the time, you know, I just think, uh, it's don't tell me they haven't earned the right to take one swipe like that. They of have. course. I mean, so, they've been the punching bag this yeah. entire generation. So last thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, look at, we mentioned it earlier, but June 11th is the next real big date. It looks like, right. Yeah, the, so far. The, the IGN event is the following week. So on June 11th, we get EA Play and we get um, the the Cyberpunk event, which is bound to be pretty awesome, right? And I think a lot of people were upset that we didn't see a huge third-party title beyond Assassin's Creed on Inside Xbox, but i don't know how you can expect that because all these other, you know the ubisofts of the world and the cd project reds and the bethesdas they want to have their own event too right and they gotta have something to show yeah no that's true that's so, a good point so i think that you know it makes sense that we wouldn't see it yesterday 
But, Graham, I want to go to your first year because EA Sports is talking about they've already said Madden and FIFA will be at EA Play. I'm assuming we'll see the, the reimagining of Anthem there. But they're also saying a new unannounced or an as yet unannounced sports title. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that that's NHL 21. Because they never actually announced that NHL is a thing until the awards at the end of June. Okay, and they probably won't be having the awards now. Well, well you can't have awards when there's no season end to give awards for yeah so that's 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 a good point (laughs) (laughs) but so i i'm right by saying so (laughs) as yet on an unannounced sports title like i was thinking like what could this be and it's definitely not golf because we saw the 2k announcement for pga tour 2k unless you're gonna do wrestling and and um 2k still has the the rights to wwe okay so unless they were going to go with that new one, the AEW or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's probably just NHL. Well, another one you didn't say, Tyler, is FIFA. Well, no, they said FIFA. FIFA and Madden. Oh, they did say yeah, FIFA. Okay. FIFA and Madden yeah. will be there. Unless they're going to go back, dip their toe back in the NBA, like, again. Or are they trying to do MLB? But I have a feeling we would have seen a press release about an EA agreement with Major League Baseball by now. If they were going to do that. And, and Major League Baseball just extended their agreement with Sony with the understanding that they'll release it on Xbox. And potentially Switch. So, I think it's just going to be NHL 21, which is super disappointing. Yeah, that would be. So, not that I'm not happy to play NHL 21, I am, but it'd just be disappointing. So I would assume that at EA Play, we'll see those three games, those sports games. And then we'll see the reimagination of Anthem. And we'll probably get a, a quick teaser reveal of whatever Battlefield's going to look like next year. Am I missing anything? Well, there's there's rumors, too, yes. about a smaller-scale Star Wars game that we might see at EA Play this year, too. And Mass Effect. Yep, and Mass Effect. So, it could be a really good show. So I, I think that yeah, you know, no, there's, sure. there's a lot of potential there for that. And then the one that I'm sort of unsure about is Bethesda, because I'm not sure that they're going to have one of those games ready to go for console. They launch. already said they're not yeah. doing a digital conference in June, yep. but more to come later in the year. Yeah, so I just, you know, I don't know if they'll do anything in conjunction with IGN or Jeff Keighley, but yeah. I can't imagine they wouldn't want to do their own thing. So, right. All right. Any other thoughts, guys, before we wrap up and get out here? I thought the inside Xbox was good, though, overall. Yeah, I agree. Um, You know, a couple missteps, but it doesn't ruin the whole thing. I do think Xbox needs to learn that they don't always need to show, or sorry, not every game needs to be a (laughs) post-apocalypse, dystopian future, um, with the color brown. I know you love the color brown, Microsoft. Um, you put it in every one of your games, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, Halo has some color, thank God. But, you know, Gears is browns and shades of brown and more brown and <laughs> brown some more. And not every game that you're going to show needs to be that. I'm just saying. Yeah, just that's, saying. That's, that's fair. Give me some color in my life. You well, know? see, these has plenty of color. There is that. Is it? It's all muted colors. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's colors, but it's like. Yeah, it's all muted. I, mm, crackdown. That's some colorful. There you go. All right, fair. Yeah. Okay. So, you can read up on everything we just talked about. We have news stories covering it all on GenerationXbox.com. Head over there to read that as well. Some opinion pieces on, like, see if these, which we just mentioned. And uh, next week, you'll be able to read up on the top 10 Xbox exclusives of all time. Which we'll finish up next week with numbers five or yeah five through one. So join us on two twelve for that. But remember, head on over to generationxbox.com for the latest news, opinions, reviews, everything in the world of Xbox. The site just launched today, right before we hit record to record the podcast. So we're super proud of that, um, and it'll be growing and evolving over time. So we'd love to have you there with us from the beginning. So come and join. Uh, follow us on Twitter at generation x underscore box facebook 
I'm going to head over to facebook.com slash generation xbox.com all the words spelled out so do that and uh, we'll have the links to all that right in the show notes so check that out as well so before we get out of here let's uh, jump into our quick time event news stories and releases for the week steven take us away yeah so we saw an announcement for pj tour 2k21 made by the same people that made the golf club uh we can assume it will have a little bigger budget which might mean more courses uh pga license and maybe even more actual real life golfers um but you know if you're not a fan of the golf club well it's possible some things change but you know you you gotta gotta keep a lookout because you know, it's made by the same people, so there you go. Um, also, NASCAR Heat 5 was announced. Uh, I think it comes out July 7th. I'm going to get your hands on that. Uh, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. We saw screenshots and a countdown trailer today. Um, and in that trailer, uh, before they removed it, mm-hmm. had a release date of October 22nd. Um, but then they removed the release date and just said coming 2020. Um, so so that crossed. could have been a placeholder date, but... We imagine it'll be in that window, mm-hmm. so there you go. Um, and uh, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, Fortnite Party Royale is a thing that's going on. It's a music festival. You can go in, hang out with your friends, listen to music. Uh, there's no combat. They're turning all of that off as they do when they have these concerts, but they're bringing back some of people's favorites. You can hang out and and you know give you something to do this weekend. And yeah, but that's going to wrap up Quick time events, Graham, you want to go into releases? Sure. Releasing on the 12th of May, we have Hunt Down. And then on the 13th, you could get Deep Rock Galactic, as well as Super Mega Baseball 3. And then finally, on the 14th, you can pick up Ion Fury. All right. Thank you, Graham. And Super Mega Baseball 3, can't wait to play it. I've loved both the first two. So... Look forward to see how they continue to evolve that series going forward. All right, guys, let's wrap up to 11 and uh, we'll get out of here until next week with episode 212. Um, have a great week, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Head on over to generationxbox.com for all the latest in Xbox news. Until next week, have a great week, everybody. Stay safe, take care of each other, and we will talk to you soon. Bye bye. See you, everyone.